the top of a solar light. Now, I've looked at various solar lights in the past, but I thought it's worth actually taking a look at this one again, just because it's the type that has the colour changing LED as opposed to an ordinary LED. And if you've modified your own solar lights and you've tried putting in a colour changing LED in place of an existing, say, maybe a white one, you'll have noticed that it just stays continually on one colour, usually red. And the reason for that is because the, the colour changing LEDs have a little chip in them that needs to be powered all the time to actually remember where it is. And what you can't see is that the LEDs and the solar lights, because it uses a little boost circuit, are usually pulsing at very high frequency, something that we're in the region of about 200 kilohertz for efficiency. And that's enough of an off time to reset the chip and it just goes back to the first colour. So let's say I open this one one up and uh, take a look at the difference in the circuitry to allow them to use the colour changing chip. It's simple enough, it is just a diode and capacitor usually. Usually a 1N4148 and usually 100 nanofarad. Let's get the little screws out the way. Aha, right okay. This is just rammed in. Okay, let's take a closer look at this. I'm going to um, see if I can get closer to this with a zoom and also a bit of extra illumination so we can actually see the components in detail. Okay, super zoom up and I'm going to try and hold it steady here. The main chip is a 4-pin YX8018B, very common, excuse me wavering about all over here, it is super zoomed that I'm holding the circuit board up here. Also, please excuse the state, the finger's going to be a lot worse by the end of this week, it's going to be a tough week work-wise. It's got a inductor in it, uh, orange, orange, brown, silver, the orange, orange, brown, that means 331, 330 micro -henries. It's got the little diode, the sort of 1N4148 type diode. Let me just try and point at that there, though most of you will have spotted that. And then it's got the capacitor, which is 104, that's a 100 nanofarad capacitor. The nickel beta hydride cell is rated 1.2 volt, 40 milliamp hour. Very typical of these. And the switch and that's about it. And then of course we've got the circuit board underneath. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of reverse engineering and uh, see if I can find that chip and then I'll be back in a moment. The YX8018, there is information about it online. I have found the data sheet for this before, but I couldn't find it this time. I found lots of pictures of the schematics and it's got a lot of configurations. You can actually use this chip for quite a lot of different things or different uh, setups. And even for driving the LED from the inductor, some of the circuits have the LED across the inductor and other ones have it going from the inductor to the zero volt rail, um, the negative here or the negative of the battery. And that uh, is just the circuit in this instance is using the LED across the inductor, but it's got an e that extra diode. So um, the arrangement they've got here is this chip is very clever. It's got a, I'm not sure why they call it these, but I suppose CE, I'm guessing, chip enable. And that's also used uh, as an input to actually charge the nickel metal hydride cell. So here's the solar panel here with the light shining on it and the current is flowing, well it's connect common to the positive of the nickel metal hydride cell and then there's a diode so all the current generated by this um, solar panel goes to charging the nickel metal hydride cell. But when it gets dark and the amount of current that the, uh, chip, the solar panel puts out is somewhere in the region of less than 100 microamps or so, this chip then turns on and when it turns on, the LX is repeatedly pulsed to the ground. And what happens there is that when it's turned on, this inductor has the, this end connect to positive and this end is taken down to negative. The LED won't light at that point because it's reverse biased. And that puts a amount of magnetic charge into the inductor. When it turns off, the magnetic field collapses and this end then goes positive and this end goes negative and then the current flows through the LED. And that's it in the configuration that you'd often find with just a white LED. The amount of current that flows can be adjusted. Uh, they give a range of values from 560 microhenry giving about 3 milliamps through the LED to a much lower value 47 microhenry can go up to about 30 milliamps. But this is 330 in this instance. Let's write that in 330 microhenry which I'd guess is probably in the region of somewhere just below 10 milliamps, say 5 milliamps perhaps. Now, 
because this is the uh, LED, the color changing LED, it needs a capacitor across it. So you could put a capacitor across like that, but every time the circuit turned on, that would short that capacitor out and it would take the charge off it. So they put a diode in and the diode could be either pointing that way. I wonder what way it is pointing this. Let's take a wee look. It's pointing, yeah, it's pointing that way. It's pointing towards LED. So every time that uh, switch in there turns off and the magnetic field collapses, it goes through this diode and part of the current goes through the LED, but it also charges up this capacitor. And the LED, when the voltage across it drops too low, this capacitor will, it, it stops passing current, but this capacitor will just hold it there and that keeps the memory in the LED intact for the next cycle and that's how it can go through the colour changing sequence. But what's really strange in this instance is that they have actually done quite an odd thing, a non-standard circuit arrangement. Instead of the capacitor being there, they've, I think they've put it down there. Right, that's about right. I think it is positive with respect to the negative. Is that right? But it, it's a strange. It's not a standard. It's not part of the standard circuit. I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to just double check that because now I'm not sure. That doesn't look right. Yeah, I've checked, and this is exactly how it's showing with the uh, capacitor going to the negative volt rail. Which to me that would have been much better actually put across there. But that's what they've done. It's quite a strange arrangement. But that is the gist of it. That's how you get the colour changing LEDs to avoid resetting continually if they're used in a circuit like that. And in the case of uh, if you have an existing solar light with the, the two wires that are going out to the LED, all you have to do is tack a capacitor across the LED and have a diode pointing towards the positive from the circuit. And that should actually provide that small smoothed supply just to allow that LED to stay lit and hold its colour sequence. And that is it. Neat little circuits. This is another generic sort of pound shoppy type light. It's very good for what you get. It's well worth just to get almost actually for that chip and the battery and well indeed everything in there. It's a useful little module in its own right. Very neat little thing.